In this video, I'll be doing the paper two mathematics exam, CSEC mathematics exam, which was only administered today. So let's let us begin. Question one. Find the exact value of so this question didn't say whether or not we were allowed to use our calculator to do the solution. So Let's work it out in a way. So find the exact value of 5 over 6 plus 2 thirds minus 12 over 35 times 7 over 9. So all of operations dictates that we should multiply first. All right. So we end up with this. This is, this is 5 over 6 plus 2 thirds minus. And of course, we can multiply uh, these two fractions. So uh, 7. We can say 7 into itself, that's 1. 7 into 35, that's 5, right? And then we can also simplify um, by 12 and 9 by dividing by 3. So 3 into 12, that's 4. And 3 into 9, that's 3. So this becomes 4 times 1, that's 4. Over 5 times 3, that's 15. So now we can put everything over LCM, LCM for 6, 3, and 15. I think maybe 30. So LCM will be 30. 6 into 35, 5, 5, 25. 3 into 30, 10, 10, 2 is 20. 15 into 30, 2, 2 times 4, 8. So 25 plus 20. Minus 8 is equal to 37. So answer 37 over 30. Okay, let's move on. Calculate the exact value of square root 1 minus cos 37 degrees square. Correct? to three decimal places. So the square root of one minus cos 37 square. Uh, so if you think of it as so one minus cos 37 degrees, um, all square, all right? And if you apply the square root to it, so it, um, so we root this, so it's like we multiply the power by a half there, right? So this is just simply one minus cos 37 degrees to the power of one which is just 1 minus cos 37. So we're using the rule that says x to the power of a to the power of b is equal to x to the power of ab. We simply multiply the power. So here root is equivalent to a half, right? So half times 2, that's 1. So the power there is 1. So 1 minus cos 37 gives us, gives us 0 0.2. 0, 1 if we are if we are using three decimal places also you could just find one minus cos 37 square it and then take the square root again you end up with the, with the same result all right so let's let's continue uh point zero zero five two seven standard form so in standard form we will just want one non-zero number to the left of the decimal point so 5.27 which means the decimal point would have moved like one, one, two, three places to the right. So that's 10 to the minus three. All right, part C. Harris works at a call center for 35 hours per week. He is paid an hourly rate of $11.20. Calculate the amount of money Harris earns in a four week month all right so he works the call center um and 35 hours per week all rate uh, is eleven dollars twenty so we can easily calculate um the amount he works per week so he earning per week so harish earns so per week so let's do the per week earnings so earnings per week or salary per week 
All right, so per week, he worked 35 hours. And each hour, the payment for each hour is $11.20. So 35 times 11.20 will give us that's $392. And this is per week. So per month, so the earnings per month, so the earnings per month would be there for the earnings per month per month will be there for and we have four weeks in a month, so be four times the times weekly earnings, which is three ninety two. So per month is four times three ninety two, which is which is equal to one thousand five hundred and sixty eight dollars. In a certain week, Harish works eight hours overtime. Overtime hours are paid at one and a half times the usual eleven dollars twenty per hour rate. Find the total amount of money Harish is paid for that week. So remember the weekly earnings is three ninety two. Alright, so the amount for that week, amount paid. So the, the, the pay for, for this particular week will be the normal rate, the normal pay for the per week, which is $392, plus the overtime, and the, the overtime is eight hours of overtime. All right, so eight hours of overtime. So eight hours times the, the usual $11.20. Um, times one and a half or right, that's 1.5 good so this is 392 plus the overtime pay the overtime pay will be eight eight hours times 11 20 times time and a half so that's eight times 11 20 times 1.5 that will be 134 Point four dollars, and if we add the normal weekly rate, which is three ninety two, we end up with five twenty six dollars and forty cents. All right, let's continue. Simplify so. We can it's a multiplication, so we can say five x, five x into fifteen x. That's three goes three times. So five x into itself goes one time. Five x into fifteen x. That's, that's three times. Uh, four into itself one time. Four into sixteen. That's four times. So that simplifies to three over four. Next, solve the inequality. And so we can group like terms. So let me group the M's on the left hand side. So group the M's on the left hand side. Negative 8M becomes positive 8M if I group over here. Uh, with minus 4M. I just bring this forward. Still on the left hand side. And the constants over on the right hand side. So I have positive 5. And the group the 12 over here. I end up with negative 12. Alright. So this becomes 8M minus 4M. That's positive 4M. And 5 minus 12, that's minus 7. I'm, I'm solving for m, so divide both sides by 4. Alright, so m into itself, that's m. And the inequality, stay as it is, since we're dividing both sides by a positive number, the inequality will not change direction, it remain as it is. So I actually have negative 7 over 4, or you could rewrite this as negative negative one and three quarter or negative one point seven five let's move on so the diagram below shows a compound shape and we can see the shape there made from two rectangles the lengths in the diagram we see the lengths here the rectangles are written in terms of x centimeters find an expression in terms of x for the length of p 
PQ. All right, the length of the length of PQ in terms of X. So PQ is from right here. So PQ is from PQ is from here to here, right? So we have a couple of ways we can find PQ. Uh, if I just okay, so PQ. If I just so here, if I X so PQ. Now if I use all of this length here, extend it. So this is let me just extend this. Some dotted line there. All right. Notice from M to N, from M to N, that's 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 tricks. And if I subtract uh, LR, that this section, if I subtract this section, I will left with, with 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 PQ. All right. So if I subtract this section, that's X plus three. So I subtract X plus three. I'll end up with um, three X. Take away X. That's two X. And minus distribute this. You actually have minus x minus three. So let me let me just take an extra step here. Take an extra step. So this is actually three x. Distribute the minus sign there. That's minus x minus three. So actually three x take away x. That's two x minus three. All right. So the length of, of, of PQ would be 2x minus 3 centimeters. Also, we're asked to find the length of RQ. Let's get some a length for RQ. RQ. RQ is from here. So RQ is from here to here. All right. This length of RQ. So the RQ would be equal to. So notice the entire length here. Is 4x minus 5. And if I subtract, if I subtract this piece, x plus 1, I will left with, 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 with RQ. So I subtract x plus 1. So this would, so RQ would be equal to 4x minus 5 minus x minus 1 distributing the minus so which means rq would be equal to 4x minus x that's grouping the like terms 4x minus x that's positive 3x and minus 5 minus 1 that's minus 6 so rq is actually 3x minus 6 and for pq we had 2x minus 3 all right given that the total area of the shape is 414 show that x square plus x minus 72 is equal to zero so the total area the area of the shape is actually 414 square centimeters so the total area of the shape let's let's the total area of this shape so we can break up the shape into two rectangles so this is a rectangle here this, right and a rectangle over here all right this line divides them so the, the area of a rectangle i remember is length times width so the area of this rectangle here but here is actually x plus 3 times 3x minus 6 so area length times width 3x minus 6 times x plus 3, so 3x minus 6. Times x plus 3. Plus, and the area for the other section, the area for the other section we could do um, x plus 1 times 3x. Right? x plus 1 times, times 3x. So x plus 1 times 3x equal to 414. So let's expand and simplify. And they, they are saying we should end up with, with that expression there. So let's expand. So, so 3x times x, that's 3x squared. 3x times 3, that's, that's 9x. 
minus 6 times x, that's minus 6x. Minus 6 times 3, that's minus 18. The other bracket, notice outside the x plus 1 is just 3x, so you're multiplying each term in the bracket by 3x. So 3x times x, that's, that's 3x squared. And 3x times 1, that's, one, that's 3x. Equal to 4, 14. So we can group the like terms. Notice we have a 3x squared. Another 3x squared, so that's 6x squared. Grouping the x terms now. We have 9x. Take away 6x, that's positive 3x. And also this positive 3x, that's also 6x. And the constant, we have minus 18 equal to 414. So now we're supposed to have 0 on the right hand side. So we can group the constants on the, the constant 414 over here. So we subtract 414 from, from both sides. So we end up with 6x squared plus 6x minus 18 minus 414 equal to zero which gives us 6x squared plus 6x and minus 18 minus 414 that's equal to uh, minus 432 equal to zero and of course to simplify we can divide each term by six divide each term by six so 6x squared divided by six that's x squared Divide by 6, that's just x. And minus 432. Divide by 6, we should end up with minus 72. 0 divided by 6 is 0. So we actually prove what we're asked to prove. We should end up with x squared plus x minus 72. Question 3, part A. The diagram below shows a semicircle with diameter AC. B is a point on the circumference where AB equal BC and both of them equal to 8.2. So AB is also 8.2 centimeters. All right. So state the geometrical name of the line AB. So AB is so notice AB from one point of the semicircle or the circle to another. So AB would be what we call a, a card. Run from one point on the circumference to another point on the circumference as a card. Find the value of the radius of the circle. Now this can be done um, several ways. And uh, from circle theorem, we're, we're told that AC is the diameter. So the angle formed here would be a, nine, a right angle. So this angle is 90 degrees. So what we actually have here is, is, a, is a right angle triangle. Um, and a, where AC would represent the, the hypotenuse. So we can use Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says the hypotenuse square. So the theorem says that AC square is equal to the summation of the other two sides square as 8.2 square plus 8.2 square so ac square would be equal to 8.2 times itself that's 67.24 plus 67.24 which means ac square would be equal to 134.48 so AC would actually be the square root of 134.48 which means that AC would be equal to 11.5 centimeter so ac is 11.6 centimeter but note the question asks us to find the radius so the radius is actually the midpoint the length the distance from the midpoint of this line here to a or to c whichever all right so we need to divide 
So to the radius, we divide, divide AC by 2, divide 11.6 by 2. So therefore, the radius would be equal to 11.6 divide by 2, which should give us 5 point, that's what, 11.6 divide by 2 give us 5.8. So the radius is actually 5.8 centimeters. Another thing we could have done is since, since these two opposite sides are equal, uh, then we could say the opposite angles are equal. So this would be 45. This would be 45 degrees. Also, I could break this. And the length here, let's call this O. The radius will be OC or OA, whichever. And we could find OC, OC here by using one of the trigger ratios. Uh, since OC would represent the, represent the adjacent here, so 90 degrees, because the sine, well, the cos, since it's adjacent, right? Cos 45. Cos 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse and the adjacent here would be if we call this OC or the radius over the hypotenuse here of 8.2 and if we put this over 1 and cross multiply I would say multiply both sides by 8.2 we'll end up with OC equal 8.2 cos 45 and we should end up with the same 5.8 centimeters. So whichever method uh, should be okay. Next, each interior angle of a regular polygon is 160 degrees. Calculate the number of sides of the polygon. Right, so let's use a famous formula for this one. Interior angle equal n minus 2 over n times 180 where, where n represents the number of sides all right so the interior angle we are given the interior angle here 160 so uh, 160 degrees equal to n minus 2 over n into 180 so I can times both sides by n if I times both sides by n so times this side n times both sides by n, I left with 160n equal to n into n, 1, equal, equal to n minus 2 into times 180, so that's 180 times n, that's 180n, the, the sub, um, expanding the bracket here, 180 times minus 2, that's minus 360, so we can group the n's, let me group the n's on the right hand side, so I have 180n minus 160n, the constant on the left hand side that's positive 360 so i end up with 360 equal to 180 minus 160 that's 20 20 n divide both sides by 20 so n is actually 0, 0 2 into 36 that's 18 n is actually equal to 18 so the number of sides of this polygon um, this polygon has 18 sides. Alright, so 18 sides. Since n is equal to 18. The diagram below shows a trapezium A drawn on a square grid. What are we asked now? There's a trapezium. Uh, and the diagram above draw the image of A after it goes a reflection in the line x equal to negative 1 label the image a, a prime there and then we should do it when it when it undergoes a, a translation by the vector 4 negative 7 i will give that label in there a double prime there so first let's do the reflection in the line x equal to negative 1 x equal to negative 1 will be this line so forgive me i don't have a ruler here so First, we draw the line x equal negative 1, which runs through, cuts the x-axis at negative 1. So, lay, always label your line. 
This is line x equal negative 1. We're going to reflect A. So same distance away. So here from the line, mirror line here, this 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 vertex here is two two units away. So on the other side, two units away. All right. This uh, is what's well. This is from the from the image line x equal negative one is four units away. So the image will also be the same four units away. Uh, this vertex. How far is it? One, two, three units away. So one, two, three units away. And then this vertex four away. So this will end up here. All right. So this is a, this is our image, a image. So we reflect each vertex in the line x equal negative one. All right. That's a image. Next, we're asked to reflect the same. Trapezium A with a vector 4, negative 7. So 4, negative 7, remember the vectors in there were called X, Y form. So the positive 4 means you're going 4 to the right. Negative 7 you means you're going 4 down. Each vertex, 4 units to the right and 7 units down. So each vertex, 4 units, so let's start with this one, 4 to the right and 7 down, so 4, negative 7. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4 and 7 down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next vertex. All right. Four to the right, seven down. So one, two, three, four. And seven down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, likewise. All right. Same. Four units down, all right. Four to the right, seven down. We end up here. And this, four to the right. One, two, three, four. And seven down, we end up here. So this is our E double prime. So again, we translate vertex by vertex. Or another thing you could have done is write the coordinates of each vertex and add four negative seven to each of them. So it's A double prime. Alright, so notice what this vertex here was negative 5, 2. You add 4, neg so negative 5, 2. You add 4, negative 7. This would give you minus 2, minus 5. And sorry, minus 1, minus 5, which is here. Right? And likewise, this, this is what? Minus 3, 2. You add 4, negative 7. You end up with minus one, positive, sorry, positive one, minus five, which is here. All right, and so on. Let's, let's, that's another way I could have done it. All right, so, okay, so that's it. That's, that's, that's part C. So we're on to question four. Consider the following functions. So we have two functions there, f of x, well, three functions, f of x, g of x, h of x. For what value of x is f of x undefined? So note, we cannot divide by zero. So f of x is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. So if we, if we subtract two from both sides, um, x equal to minus two. So the function is undefined when x is negative 2. Notice when x is negative 2, you'll have a denominator of 0. And we know you, you can't divide by 0, right? Part 2. g of a quarter. So we look for the function g and replace x with whatever is in the bracket. So replace x with a quarter. So it's 4 times x becomes 4 times a quarter. Minus 5. 4 times a quarter, that's 1, minus 5, 1 minus 5, that's negative 4. H of negative 3, so remind ourselves what, what H of x is. It's H of x, so H of negative 3, we're going to replace x with negative 3. So x square becomes negative 3 square. And then we have add, we add, add 1, right? So negative 3 square plus 1, so negative 3 times itself, that's 9, 
9 plus 1, so the answer is 10. All right, f, f, 0. So let's find f, let's find a function f. So f of x is 2 over x plus 2. Let me just re restate it. f of x is 2 over x plus 2. So f of x is 2 over x plus 2, which means f of 0, f of 0 will be 3 over, replace x with 0, so 3 over 0 plus 2, which is 3 over 2, or same as, as 1.5. That's f of 0. So which means that f, f of 0, f, f of 0, now we just found f of 0 to be 1.5. Right, so f of f of zero would be f replace f of zero with what it is one point five. So we find f of one point five or three over two, whatever, same thing. So f of one point five. This time now you're replacing x with one point five. All right, so it's three over one point five plus two, which is the same as three divided by one point five plus two. That's three point five. All right. All right. If if we can we can simplify this to uh, if I multiply it, um, numerator and denominator that denominator by ten that's that's thirty over thirty five is it? And if I divide by five, I get six over seven or anything equivalent. As we continue, write an expression in its simplest form g h of x so g h of x what's h of x so we substitute h of x now h of x was h of x was x squared plus one and g was 4x minus five so you're you're substituting x squared plus one into 4x minus five so g of h now h is x squared plus one and you're going to substitute that into g meaning in the function g, we're going to replace x with whatever is inside the bracket here, x squared plus 1. So in g, we're going to replace x with x squared plus 1. So here is g. All right, we're going to replace x with whatever h is, x squared plus 1. So 4 times x becomes 4 times x squared plus 1 minus 5. So that's 4 times x squared plus 1 minus 5, so we end up with 4x squared plus 4 minus 5, so this is 4x squared, 4 minus 5, that's negative 1, that's the simplest we can put it. G, of, G inverse of minus 2, so first we need to find the inverse of G, so let's find the inverse of G, so we'll let y be equal to whatever G was, remind us of what G was again, G was 4x minus 5. So let y be equal to 4x minus 5. And then to find the inverse, we can interchange x and y. So interchange x and y. y become x. x becomes y. And after we interchange, we transpose for y. So we can group, add 5 to both sides. We end up with x plus 5 equal to 4y. We're transposing for y. So we can divide both sides by 4. And whatever you have for y, that's your inverse function. So it means, therefore, that g inverse x is equal to whatever you have now for your new y, which is x plus 5 over 4. And g inverse 2 means we're going to replace negative 2, replace x with negative 2, right? So 4x plus 5 becomes minus 2 plus 5 over 4, minus 2 plus 5, that's positive 3, over 4. Question 5. Each of 75 girls recorded the name of her favorite sport. The number of girls who chose chuck and cricket are shown on the bar chart below. So let me just check, the, check out the bar chart. So chuck and cricket. Let's, let's make an observation for Chuck. Um, 12 girls chose Chuck. Notice for Chuck, 12 girls chose Chuck. And for cricket, 16 girls. Well, not 16. Let's see how much a thin line follows. So. 
if you notice know your counting, it's each decline here, value 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 16. This would be 18, this would be 18, right? So halfway would be 17. So set of a track is actually 12. Girls and for cricket, this seems to be 17. 17 girls like cricket. So 12 for track, 17 for cricket. Let's see what they're asking us. How many more girls choose cricket than track as their favorite sport? So that's the difference. So 17 take away 12. So five more chose cricket, right? Five more chose cricket. Use 11 girls. 11 girls recorded tennis as their favorite sport. For the remaining girls, the number who chose swimming compared to the number who chose football was in the ratio 2 to 3. Use this information to complete the bar chart above, determining modal sport after all of that. Right? Modal sport is just whichever sport uh, most girls chose. That would be the highest bar, the tallest, tallest bar, of course. All right, so, so 11 girls recorded tennis as their favorite sport. So, so let's find 11. 11, ten. so this, this is 10. So 11 would be midway between 10 and 12. All right, so 11 chose, 11 chose tennis. Okay, so 11 for tennis. All right, so here's tennis. All right, so for tennis, and again, I don't have a ruler, so forgive me. So 10, 11 is somewhere between, between, somewhere between 10 and 12, right? Now somewhere here, and then use a ruler, of course, as it's supposed to be a straight line. So that's for tennis. All right, so 11 for tennis, and of course, you'll shade your bar. All right, let's see how, about swimming and football. So, 11 girls chose to call it tennis. For the remaining girls, the number who chose swimming compared to the number who chose football was in the ratio 2 to 3. Let's just check something quickly. Um, actually, it was 75 girls. 75 girls. 75 girls, right? So we know after 75, uh, we already have 11 and 12. That's 23. 23 and 17. That's 40. So we have 40 girls, so, so 40 girls chose these three sports. So of the 40, uh, remember it was 75 girls, and we have 40 accounted for, um, so which means that 35, so between, between swimming and football, we actually have 35 girls between swimming and football uh, in the ratio. So let, let's see now. Um, For, number, for the remaining girls, the number who, and the remaining, the remaining girls, that would be 35 girls, right? For the remaining 35 girls, the number who chose swimming compared to those who chose football was in the ratio of 3 to 4. So swimming compared to football is in the ratio of 2 to 3. All right, so we can calculate the amount who chose swimming. So that is 2 out of 5. So swimming, so for swimming, the amount is two fifth, right? So two fifth of the remainder, and the remainder was thirty-five. So two fifth of thirty-five. So two fifth times thirty-five. Two five into that. That's seven. So fourteen. And for football, football is three fifth, three out of five. So three fifth of the remainder, which is thirty-five. So five into fifth, thirty-five. That's seven. Seven times three, twenty-one. So fourteen for swimming. And uh, 21 for football. So 14 for swimming. 14 would be here. So it's counting each tick line value 2. So 14 for swimming. So we can just shade. And use a ruler, right? And 21 for football. And football seems to have the highest, would be the highest. Because the highest of so far was the cricket. So football, 21. 21 is mid, so this is 22. So 21 is somewhere between, tw midway between 20 and 22. Which would be, which would be about here, right? Somewhere between 20. 
and 22. All right, so of course you bring a bar down, bring a bar up. And of course you use a ruler and a pin and a shade. Ruler and a pencil and, and of course you will shade. All right, so this is of course would be the mode. The mode of, of course would have to be, would have to be football. That's the tallest bar. All right, so the modal sport would have been football. And, and just to confirm, remember that we were told that it was 75 girls. So when they add up the number of girls who chose their respective sports, they should end up with 75. So 14 and 11, that's 25. 25 and 12, that's 37. Thirty-seven and seventeen, that's fifty-four. Fifty-four and twenty-one, that's seventy-five. All right. All right. Let's continue. Next question. One of the girls is selected at random. What's the probability that she choose neither truck? That she would choose neither truck nor cricket as her favorite sport. So remember the total. Amount of girls was 75 and the amount that chose neither truck nor cricket. So let's look at it. Look at the totals again. Neither truck nor cricket. So truck was truck was 12 and cricket was 17. Together this was what? Truck was 12 and cricket was 17. So that's 29. All right, so it's 75 uh, minus 29. All right, so we, we, so we subtract track and cricket from the total since they didn't cho choose those sports. So 75 minus 29, that's what? All right, 46. So the amount that chose neither of these sports would be 46. Over the total, 75. The information of, on the favorite sport of the girls, the information of the favorite sport of the 75 girl is to be shown on a pie chart. Calculate the sector angle for football. So sector angle for football, and how to calculate the angle again, is the fraction, so for football, for football, uh, the number of a football was football was 21 so the sector angle of a football would be 21 over the total which is 75 so the foot that's a fraction of a football all right sector angle of a football is 21 over 75 times 360 degrees this would give us 21 over 75 times 360, so 21 divided by 75, that's 0 0.28, times 360, that's 100, 0.8 degrees. All right, so in question six, we're asked, just ask to use um, 22 over seven for pi, not 3.14. All right, so in the figure here, um, the volume of a cone with the radius r and height h is one third pi r square h. The diagram below shows a sector, OMRN, of a circle with center O, radius 12, and sector angle here, 168. All right, which was formed using a thin sheet of metal. Calculate the perimeter of this sector above made from the thin sheet of metal. So the perimeter, all right, so if this is 12, then this would also be 12, since both of these represents the radius. All right, so perimeter, we need to find the, the length of the arc here from M to N, MRN. All right, so, so length of, length of arc. So perimeter, so by the way, the perimeter of the, of the entire sector there 
is the length of the arc and the arc MRN plus this 12 plus this 12 perimeter and perimeter uh, is, is, o, is distance around, right? So O to M right around N and back to O, all right? So notice O to M and O to N, both of them are, are 12, all right? So 12 and 12, you can put 12 plus 12, all right? And then MRN, now the formula of a sector, it's formula of a sec sector again, theta over 360, so 168 is the angle, over 360 times 2 pi r. If you no, if you find the area, it will be times pi r square. Since area of a full circle is pi r square, but it's area of the, we actually find the perimeter. All right, distance around. All right, so, so we're using 2 pi r, not pi r square. All right, so pi r square, that's for area, which we, we were not asked to find. Not in this section anyway. All right, plus 24. 12 and 12, 24. So let's fill in the gaps. So 168 over 360 times 2 times we're asked to use 22 over 7 for pi. And the radius is 12 plus 24. So let's use our calculator to do the rest. So we end up with this becomes 35.2 plus 24. So 35.2 plus 24, that's 59.2, was it centimeters? Or, or, the, or even centimeters, all right? From this sector in A, by joining OM to ON, as shown below. Calculate the radius of the cone and we ask us to calculate the height of the cone. So a cone is made from a sector in A by joining OM to ON. So notice if you look at um, M is piecing here to N. OM to ON. So let's look at so OM. OM ON. So it's folded, it's piecing. So OM, whether it's we're going from O to M. R from O to N is 12, so this should be 12, O to M R N should be 12 centimeters. Um, so it's piecing. Uh, so the, the, the circumference is, is now just, just this M R to N, all right? Uh, we found that to be, we found that to be 35.2. When we're finding the, the, the circumference, all of this section was 35.2. So the circumference of the of the cone now is just that part, the circular part of the cone. So the circumference here that's thirty five point two. So we can use that to form I to form to calculate R. All right. So remember for our circle, C equal to two pi R, and the circumference. Remember we you we are using this very important. We are using this now to form the new new circumference here for the for the for the cone, the, the circular part. So it's 35.2, so 35.2, 35.2 equal to 2, and we're asked to use 22 over 7 for pi times r, which means that 35.2, so 2 times 22, that's 44 over 7 times r. So to find r, we can multiply both sides by 7 over 44. So 35.2 times 7 over 44, the reciprocal of this. And we multiply the right hand side by, by, by 7 over 44, we end up with just 1 R. Alright, so R. So the right hand side, 44 over 7 times 7 over 44. Alright, we end up with just 1, 1 R. So R is equal to 35.2 times 7 over 44. Let me just check that. Times 7. So that's 5.6. So R is 5.6 
centimeters. So this R, this is 5.6 centimeters. And therefore, we can use Pythagoras theorem now to get the height. So we have a right angle triangle here. So Pythagoras theorem um, says that, 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 so R, so R is 5.6 centimeter. We're also asked to find the height. All right, so using Pythagoras theorem, the two short sides square, so R square plus H square. So R square plus H square is equal to the hypotenuse square, which is 12 square. We just found R to be 5.6. So 5.6 square plus 8 square equal to 12 square. And 12 square, that's 144, right? And what 5.6 times itself? That's, that's what, so 5.6 times 5.6. That's 31.36 plus 8 square equal to 144. So if we if we uh, group the constants on the right hand side, we end up with a square being equal to one forty four minus thirty one point three six. That's one twelve point six four. So h is the square root of one twelve point six four. That's ten point six centimeters all right so the capacity of the cone same as volume all right so volume is your, is the one third pi r square each so it's one third 22 over 7 for pi r was 5.6 so 5.6 square times the height and we found h to be 10.6 all right, so this means that the volume is equal to, let's do this calculation here now. So this is one third, so five. That's 348.2 centimeter cube. But we're also put the uh the question in liters. I think it's a thousand a thousand cm cube is equal to one liter. So to get the answer in liter, we divide by a thousand. So the volume divide this by a thousand is zero point three four eight two liters.